What's going on guys? It's Nick here, back with another fantasy football video. 12 team PPR mock draft this time, the kind of league that I personally enjoy the most. Love PPR leagues, love 12 team leagues. Um, so we're going to we're going to hope for a good one here. We're going to try our best to make a uh, a team that I would draft because this video goes up Monday, mock draft Monday. It's actually it's actually Monday right now and I'm recording it, 12:30 a.m. Um, but I got to draft Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Monday. And then another one I don't know when it is. So <laughs> preparing for those, all 12 team, all PPR except my money league home is a standard because it's still the still archaic. But this one almost filled up. We had three spots. I mean it's 12:30, so I don't I don't exactly expect them to fill up. But kind of want to see where Zeke ends up going. I still think he'll end up going like late se late second round in most leagues. Uh, we'll see where he ends up going. Um, only news to talk about um, was today, a few hours ago, uh, Anquan Bolden retired. So that bumps up the value of Matthews and Zay Jones. I still think Matthews is the one we prefer over Zay Jones. Uh, running back heavy early in this one. Um, cause I still think Matthews is a guy. I think he's going to be healthy for week one. He's generally been healthy over his career. So... I, I'd pick him up late, uh, but I picked Zay Jones up as well late. No problem with that pick. Um, I don't think there was any other news. Uh, Kareem Hunt opened as the feature back in the second yeah, second week of preseason. Um, Rawls is hurt. Don't know how long that's going to last. Any other news? Uh, P. Ryan looked a lot better in this next game and apparently had a good week of camp. So bump him up a little bit more. We took him back after the first week. Um, Duke played some in the slot. I don't remember what he did in their second game or if that's happened. I think their second game actually happened today, so I don't know what happened there. Um, but our pick. Okay, so David Johnson, Bell, McCoy, Freeman, Gordon are all gone, so we're definitely not taking a running back. Um, wide receivers, we still have A.J. Green, so that's the obvious choice here. So we'll just take him. Um, running backs, we could have taken were DeMarco, basically, so we're not going to reach there. Um, coming back, this is PPR, so we're not, we don't need a wide receiver, or we don't need a running back, but it would be nice. So, like, I would take DeMarco, um, I'd probably take Ajayi over Howard, um, but I wouldn't take anyone but those three, but we will get one of those three. Or, no, I wouldn't touch any of those wide receivers. It'd only be if, uh, Thomas or Jordy fell to me. So we'll take whichever running back's left, DeMarco or Ajayi, whoever he doesn't pick. That's a good start. Especially if we get DeMarco. I think DeMarco... This is, this is probably the last year where I think he's a stud. But... Um, I think he's going to be a stud this year. Like, they used him a lot more than you that a lot of people think they did last year. And I think that's going to continue. So, actually, an, a non-auto-drafter picked Elliott here. So, early second. That's still too early. My take is early third. And ideally, if you're taking Elliott in the early third, it's the turn pick where you already got DJ. So you have DJ and elite wide receiver Bell. That's or um, Zeke. And I want him more in standard than in PPR. I probably won't draft him in PPR under any circumstance. Uh, McCaffrey, talk about him. He looked great in both preseason games. So PPR, his stock's really rising. Uh, Dalvin Cook's been opening as the feature back. His stock's going to shoot through the roof. Montgomery has a minor injury, so we're going to see how Jamal Williams plays, but he didn't play very well in that game. Uh, no one really stepped up. Um, Cook did okay. He didn't get a ton of playing time. Hyde looked terrible. Um, but Spencer Ware, I think his job is less and less secure as time moves on. Um, but Amari Cooper, T.Y., Dez, and actually Pryor went in the second round. That seems early. I thought he was more of a third round going in. Um, but Cooks, Doug Baldwin, it's a lot of wide receivers early. Um, Rodgers rounds out that round. Um, and before I forget, there are a few spots left in subscriber leagues. Uh, the draft for Monday is full. I think there's one more spot left in the Tuesday draft. But there's like one or two spots left in each, each day this week. So if you want in on one of those, um, write in the comment section an email. And I guess preferably what day you can draft. Um, but if there's no day preference, I'm just going to throw you into an open one. Uh, but there's probably like six or seven spots left. So if you guys want to be in a subscriber league, 
for drafting this week. Um, write your email for it's all ESPN. So write wherever your ESPN account is. Um, Demarius Gronk McCaffrey. Okay, so who are we targeting? We're targeting Crowell, but that seems unlikely. We would still get him. I'll take Dalvin Cook. Yeah, Crowell just went. Fournette just went. Um, I have Cook launched up. Like I launched him up in my rankings. I can like pull them up. Obviously not the premium ones. Um, so we'll pull that up. And because I did a huge overhaul in the rankings um, today, even I did another set. So go over and download the rankings if you haven't already. Like I put up Dalvin Cook is now eleventh in my rankings. So he looks great. I mean, it's not it's not the same thing. I saw someone on Twitter say, "Are we overreacting to Dalvin Cook because of?" Same thing with like Ty Montgomery. It'll probably be hide with this pick. I just want to see. I like Mark Ingram as well though. Um, no, we don't need any of these wide receivers. So it's Mixon. Did I say hide? I meant Mixon. No, I don't feel comfortable with Lynch or Montgomery. It's Mixon or Ingram, but I can wait on Ingram. I put Ingram a lot higher too. I have Cook at 11, Mixon at 14, and I brought Mark Ingram up to 17. And Lynch is way down there. Um, so if you guys want to download, like you'll get this basically, the tiers for all the different positions, standard and PPR. Go to the website, thefantasyfootballadvice.com. Um, it's free to download those. The premium rankings aren't free, but they have a lot more information. Um, I feel like I can wait on Ingram and maybe get him at the next one. So I feel like Woodhead's the play here because I don't need... I don't need another wide receiver. One would be nice, but there's no one that's like... Oh, Larry. Larry would be nice to have. There's no one that's screaming at me. Like All these guys seem pretty similar. I think I can get another one. really want Diggs. I already have two, though. So, it's either Larry or Woodhead. Who do you choose, Larry or Woodhead? We're going to go with Larry. This is, this is my thinking. Um, they said Sickle Cell was done with John Brown, but he's got another lower body injury. And he just keeps getting hurt. And I think it's still there now. I thought it was gone. I believed him. He's having a great camp. It stinks that these injuries happen, but I think it's not gone, and or it can't be gone. But I thought it was under control. I don't think it's under control anymore. I think that he's going to keep getting these injuries, and they're talking about like Jerron Brown is second now with like JJ Nelson, just kind of like a deep threat, I guess. Larry Fitz never gets hurt. He's always amongst the leaders in red zone targets, like Nick Ericolano. I'm going to shout him out. Uh, Evan Silva, too, is really high on him. But Eric Alano, um, I'll put his his uh, YouTube in the description. You guys should check him out. He does a mix of, like, vlogging with um, with the fantasy football. And we might be using him, having him do the podcast with us as, like, a three-person podcast each week for the channel. Still haven't worked out details of that. But he put me on uh, Larry Fitz because we had him way too low. So, I like the start of the team. AJ Green, Larry Fitz, that's just super safe. DeMarco and Mixon, I think, is safe. Um, but we're going to take best available here. And hopefully Ingram's left. If it's not, then I'm not super excited about anyone on this list. Anyone. Like, anyone down to Hunt. It's ugly. So I really want to lock up Ingram. I feel like it froze. Sometimes it does this. It like freezes there and then it launches up like to six or seven. Like what the heck? Wait, I don't think it did that. Okay. Um, in an ideal world, we would get Ingram and then Diggs. That would be perfection. But if we don't get Diggs, we'll look at Crowder. We'll look at Martavis, but this is a PPR league. 
Um, and we'll look at a manual. I see a drop off right here. If you guys can see where I scrolled to. Sneed, like, he's the second best wide receiver on that team. It makes me so upset that Ted Ginn is, like, getting the two, number two workload. And, like, it's fine if Sneed plays the slot. He's still going to get a ton of targets in that offense. It just, it's a downgrade if he's, if Ginn's on the field a ton. He didn't take targets away. So, uh, pump the brakes a little bit on Sneed. I put him behind Diggs and Crowder now. Um, in standard and PPR, I think. But Diggs, I think, is firmly at, firmly ahead of them in PPR. Like he, I have him ranked, I believe, the highest out of anyone on this list. Besides maybe Tate? Maybe? Let's see. I don't look at my rankings that much unless I'm making them. But it's Tate and then Diggs. Back to back. And then, yeah, down there is those guys. But, like, Tate, I don't know either. Because... Galladay was really good, and then it was like TJ Jones or something. I probably butchered who, whoever this person is. But he opened as the starter with the first stringers in the preseason game. So everyone's like, what the heck's up with that? Then he gets hurt, so now it's like, okay, well now it has to be Galladay. But then he wasn't used very much in the game. So I don't know. Oh, dang it. Mark went. Well, we're going to have to grab Diggs. Unless there's another running back we want to look at, but... That's really unfortunate. I really wanted Mark there. Yeah. It would be like Coleman or Theo or something, but I got to lock up my boy. Like in PPR leagues, it would be ideal to have him in 100% of my leagues. That's how confident I am in boy. And uh, Diggs said boy. It's late. But who, we need a running back now, right? We don't need one, but we we should probably get one. Um, I don't I don't really want Gillisley, especially in especially in PPR, but even in standard, I'm off him. Um, I think Rex looks phenomenal. I've always thought he was phenomenal, but I think he looks great. Um, so I don't want that pick. If you take the upside for Peterson, I'm not touching Blunt. Um, Tevin Coleman. Theo, yeah, it's all the guys I just listed. I feel like you just take the upside on AP at this point. I could look at my rankings, but I don't really feel like it. It's AP or Coleman for me. Both have huge upside. AP probably has a lower floor, but he's on a good offense. Got a good touchdown upside. Uh, yeah. Yeah, eh. I don't feel great about what I just did. Let's just see. I always like to check. Because this is how I do my rankings, too. Like, maybe I should have AP ahead of... Uh... Yeah, I have AP one spot ahead of Coleman. So now I just did that. I should probably move AP and Coleman ahead of Gillisley in the PPR rankings, which is something I'll probably do. Not after this. After this, I'm going to go to bed. I'm tired. But, wow. Kareem Hunt just went in the sixth round. Like, I love Kareem Hunt and all, but this man... This guy's got Mike Evans, Gurley, Dalvin Cook, Doug Martin in the fourth, Mark Ingram, Kareem Hunt. He's going like, he's doing like the optimal strategy for a standard league, but this is PPR. He's probably more than Mike Evans. I mean, plus Gurley. I could see if you had a huge value on like Murray or something, but I like our team. We have three and three, so we don't have to pick anyone. AJ... Larry and Diggs, love that start. DeMarco, Mixon, AP. I'm not like, I'm comfortable with the wide receivers. I'm not super confident. Like, I'm confident in these guys that they'll be good. But AP could get hurt and Mixon could take a while to get to the featured back role. I think he starts off featured back, or at least pretty pretty much the featured back. Um, good enough to warrant a third round pick, especially a late one. But I would like Theo Riddick. Um, Derek Henry, I'm not into handcuffing, but he's like not a handcuff. I don't view Coleman and Henry as handcuffs. I kind of view them as like standalone value. And if your, your other guy goes down, you've got a top five option because Derek Henry's top five. If DeMarco gets hurt, um, it just feels so early seventh round. 
for a guy that's a backup. But then again, let me look at this list. The only other, like, this list is ugly. It really is. Running back gets ugly so quickly. Um, but I'm not touching Blunt. I'm not touching Perkins. I'm not touching Gore. You could do Darren McFadden if you did um, RB0. So, like, if you could start a draft with RB0 and then grab McFadden and Jaquiz, Jaquiz, however you say his name, um, that would be ideal because you'd at least have two guys for the first three and the first six weeks, assuming Zeke stays suspended for that long. Um, something to think about. If you could if you could go RB0, first five or six rounds wide receiver, grab Jaquiz, grab McFadden, grab like Duke Johnson, grab Procise, James White, Burkhead, like those kind of guys, that's not terrible. Um, and then just, just hope that you can find one running back. That's all RB0 takes is one running back. You just got to hit on one on free agency or late. Um, but it's really hard to hit late on running back. Wide receiver, it's not insanely hard. Um, but I still see some value at wide receiver, so I might just go there. Because <laughs> I'm not pumped about the wide the running backs. Um, it's Derrick Henry. Duke, but I can wait. Yeah, I'm not going to touch anyone else, I don't think. I don't see anyone else. Um, so maybe grab one more wide receiver. I'd really like Emmanuel if he was still there. Um, other than that, it's Tyrell. Uh, Garcon, like... Uh, yeah, okay, good. We got Emmanuel. Garcon, I thought was going to be a target monster, and I still think he can be. But it's slightly concerning that Goodwin is like going off in the preseason with Hoyer. So something to consider. I don't is Garcon playing the preseason? I don't. I haven't watched the 49ers preseason games, but I don't know. It's slightly concerning. Plus their offense isn't going to score much. So Emmanuel is a far better play than Garcon. Um, but that after Tyrell, it's it's Jordan Matthews. But there there is a big drop into those other guys. So maybe take Tyrell. I don't know that we need him, though, if we've got Green, Larry, Diggs, and Emmanuel. We should probably look for a running back. I mean, Terrence West, Terrence West is fine. Probably take him. So Terrence West... I don't I don't believe Rob Kelly's going to be the star of the year. I don't believe you should be drafting Seahawks, really, at this point. Duke? Duke's not bad. Um, Jaquiz isn't a bad pick, but I think Terrence West is the best pick. Just because, I mean, he's the starting running back. And in the eighth round, like, you're going to give me the starting running back? I'd much rather have Woodhead, but fourth round's kind of early for him. I know he's old, but he doesn't have a lot of, like, miles on his legs. So don't worry about, oh, he's, what, is he 32? 31, 32? Don't be like, oh, he's super old. He's not going to be able to do anything. No, he, he hasn't been used that much. Mainly because he's been injured so much, which is something you have to factor in. But on a team that's going to throw as much as them, you know, like most in the league, Woodhead is definitely a good pick. Um, I just think that Terrence West is going to be fine. And it's not like I have to start him here. So, like, if AP gets hurt and Mixon slow, like, he'll be fine. And I think that's all I need from the position. So, I think I can find some value late with Flyers. So, I don't need... Tyrell's gone, so I should probably look tight end here. I would love Zach Ertz at that spot, but he won't be there. You can wait. You guys have heard me say, just, just wait for Austin Hooper. Um, but that's kind of what I've been doing. Like, If I don't get Jimmy Graham, if I don't get Zach Ertz, I'm just going to wait. Um, is there any value at quarterback? Cousins in the ninth, that's, that's the grade I have for him, so... I would take Cousins with this next pick. But if I don't get Cousins, uh, look for Mariota in the 10th. I think that offense like, is just going to be a juggernaut this year. And they're going to score a lot. So even though he's going to regress in efficiency, they're going to score so much that I think he's going to be very productive. So I like Mariota this season. Um... 
he's not something like I'm reaching for because I could draft Cam, could draft Rivers, Stafford, Dak, Dalton. I'll take Tyrod Lee. I know Tyrod um is more risky than he was before. Um, but when I say lately, I could get Tyrod in the 13th now, I feel like. And it is more risky because they got rid of Bolton, they got rid of um, – well, they get rid of Bolton, he's retired. But they got rid of Watkins. It almost seems like they're trying to tank. And there's a chance. Like, I've heard rumblings potentially that they trade away McCoy or Tyrod. But I guess if they traded away Tyrod, it'd probably be an upgrade, so you'd be happy. But if they trade away McCoy, Tyrod's done. But I still think he's going to get the rushing. Like, the, the passing numbers will never be there, ever. But he's going to get, like, five, 600 rushing yards. Who's he going to throw to? So, something to consider. Um, our guys went. So, we can still get Cam. You guys know I don't love Cam. But I'm going to wait around because I think all these guys are pretty similar. Um, tight end. Ebron's always hurt. I can wait on... I can wait. I don't have to grab someone. So running back, Shaquiz or Jamal or P. Ryan. Sproles, they're going to try and use Sproles out here. Uh, my boy Rex. But the best option just feels like Shaquiz, but I don't feel fantastic about it. Is there a wide receiver I like? Um, Not one that I love. Okay, we'll draft your kids. No! <laughs> Dang. I always do that, too. We got auto-picked. That's not a bad pick, though. Cam Newton. It's not a bad one. It's just one I probably wouldn't make. 45 seconds is just not too much. But we'll, we'll go with, with what we would get with Cam. Because it probably would be the same picks this way. Jaquiz or Britt? Okay, well, they made the choice easier. Britt or Jordan Matthews? I think now it might be Jordan Matthews. I mean, he's got a limited ceiling on Cleveland. Britt does. I guess now it's Jordan Matthews. Because I, I, again, believe he stayed healthy to this point in his career. And now Bolton's gone. Um, my belief is that Matthews plays the slot. Ugh, I don't know. Because they had three slot receivers. Like, it was Zay Jones, Matthews, and Bolin. It was like, who plays the slot? I've heard that Zay Jones is going to try and play the outside. I don't know if he's going to be good at it. I guess we need to watch preseason. But, like, Matthews isn't going to play the preseason. So, we don't know. We're going to have to listen to the beat reporters. But I think it's a good pick. Just because, like, how many passing yards do you think Tyrod's going to have? Even if you don't think it's a lot, it's probably around 3,000. Maybe low 3,000s. Okay, who's he going to throw to? It's going to be McCoy, Matthews, Zay Jones. Like, some tight ends, but it's not like they utilize the tight end a ton in the offense. So wouldn't that project Matthews at around 1,000? Maybe maybe gets a little under 1,000, but in the 10th round, 1,000-yard receiver? I don't know. That's just That's just the math that I do in my head. Um, so not a bad pick. So let's, what do we need? We went even, which is pretty much what I like doing. So probably a running back next. We got five wide receivers, Green, Fitz, Diggs, Emmanuel, Matthews. Running backs, DeMarco, Mixon, AP, West. Let's get a PPR back. Let's get someone who's going to catch us some passes that all else fails with throwing them in. I think people are overvaluing James White a little bit. I think, there he goes. Um, I think I'd honestly rather just take Burkhead. Um, but Sproles is probably who I would pick here. It'd be Sproles or Burkhead, but I think I can get Burkhead after, although maybe he climbs up now. He's doing good in the preseason. Um, but we're never drafting Charles. We're never drafting Forte. Never Lat. Hill only in standard. Um, I don't know what to think of Bernard. Probably not. Joe Williams, no. He's not going to catch anything. Jonathan Williams is a great handcuff and a great pick, to be honest. He's, he's a good pick, so throw him in the mix. Mac, I don't know, you get a little late with these guys. Where's, um, yeah, Chris Carson is a name to think about. 
the running back on the Seahawks. He just looks like the best running back on that roster. But Jalen Richard, um, no one in this range. So the people I just talked about, but preferably Sproles because um, you guys saw the video I did on the players to avoid. Like I'm not drafting Blunt. He's not even that efficient in short yardage. And he's looked horrible in camp and preseason. Sproles is fine. If Sproles stays healthy, I don't care if he's 34 years old. He's going to catch the ball out of the backfield. It's all I want at this point. So I'll take Sproles and hope I can get Burkhead in this next round. And just kind of lock up my... I always like doing that in PPR. I always grab like two, two satellite backs. Just get two guys who all else fails. Everyone dies, you know. You're just having a horrible injury week with horrible matchups and just bye weeks and just everything's falling apart. You throw in Burkhead. He catches two or three passes, gets like 40 total yards, and you didn't die at your running back two or flex position. That's that's how I think of these guys. Um, so I just like having two of them take a shot. And honestly, Burkhead has so much upside. If White goes down, if Gill can't come back from the injury he's had the entire spring and offseason... Like, he's had this hamstring injury for so long. And Burkhead has looked great. And the Patriots love using players like Burkhead. Who can, like, you have you have a Gilsey or Blunt in the backfield, right? They're not passing to him. They're either running it or throwing to a wide receiver. You have Burkhead in the backfield? No clue. No clue. You have Burkhead in the backfield. You don't know if it's a run. You have to guard Gronk and Edelman and Cooks and Hogan or Mitchell or Amendola, whoever's on the field. And now, if they line up Burkhead and White, you're toast. They're, you can't cover that. Like, how are you going to put... You have to put linebackers on Burkhead and on White. One of them's going to win that matchup. So you just can't cover that. So I don't I don't think they should be using Gillespie anything other than the goal line. I don't know. That was just my take on Burkhead. I, I love Burkhead. I was so pumped when they got him. More pumped than when they got Gillespie. Although I was excited because we have... Gilsley is fantastic in the red zone. Um, he's great, great goal line back. Um, but Burkhead is just as good. I think Burkhead was like six and six of six uh, from the three yard line and in, in last season. Six carry was it? I can't remember. He's six of six and something. He was hundred percent. He's the most efficient short yardage something. Can't remember what it is though. That's unfortunate. How many touchdowns did he have? I don't want his contract. There's no way he had six touchdowns. Yeah, he had two touchdowns. What was it? Maybe it was the third and short and fourth and short. I think that's what it was. He was six of six on third and short or fourth and short. I don't know, guys. I tried. There's a stat out there. You can look it up. Um... We're not going to draft another running back, most likely. But it would be Jonathan Williams, Alvin Kamara, Shane Vereen, or the um, the Seahawks running back, the Chris something. Chris is it Connor? Chris? I think someone drafted him. It's Chris something. Chris Carson. That's what it is. Uh, we should probably grab another wide receiver. Um... Oh, or, or a tight end. <laughs> yeah, that's why we wait. That's why we wait, boys. Uh, also, the latest report was that OJ Howard is mainly going to block this year. Which is what I've been saying all summer. You don't draft OJ Howard. He's a great blocker. That is not a benefit in fantasy football. Uh, that doesn't mean you go out and draft Cam and Brait. Because they're just going to cannibalize each other. They're going to finish like the same. But you're basically going to get half of what Brait did last year for both of them. So you don't do that. Um, Fleener, I just don't think is that good. So don't draft him. You can take a shot on Julius Thomas. Um, not many shots other than that. But Austin Hooper is a monster. Someone I'm perfectly comfortable taking at this point. If he does, I promise. I can find someone in free agency that's going to get me a few points. It's all I want from the tight end position. Because it's so volatile. Like That's why in DraftKings... Almost always, like there are very rare instances where I pay up at tight end because it's so volatile. Everyone has a floor of zero. 
You know, I, I won the most money last season when everyone was on Kelsey, who was expensive. He literally got one. Then you just you just don't pay up at tight end in DraftKings. You pay down at tight end. You pay down at defense. I honestly go to like the bottom three defenses, unless it's like a Broncos are playing a really good matchup. But pay down at tight end. Pay down at defense. Find a value somewhere, and then you can just load up everywhere else. I typically pay down at quarterback and cash games, but tournaments, um, I don't really pay attention to price as much. Just try and find a matchup I like and then stack it with a wide receiver. But I'll talk plenty about DraftKings strategy. Um, I'll make a DraftKings video uh, for week one, but we're not close enough yet. Um, there's going to be so many values in week one that give me so much chalk. Um, I updated my lineup. I've done preseason. Um, I won. I've only done two days. I won both days, but I only put like one lineup in to a tournament and I won both tournaments just like the min cash um, but there's a lot of research for preseason um, are there any names jumping out Roby Robbie sorry Robbie Anderson I like to say Roby sounds cooler uh, Marquise Lee Goodwin you can take a flyer on no one in this range but uh, Dachshund's our guy here i don't know what the latest reports are on him i haven't heard like anything uh, but we're not drafting nelson aguilar i don't care if he's gonna play the slot sometimes um it's dachshund or if you wanted to go like jerron brown or Ro robbie anderson um i think you guys are gonna kill me every time i say roby doesn't this sound better like if you were if you were robbie just roby does this just sound better whatever I have a quarterback, right? Yeah, I got Cam. Okay. Oh, scared there when I saw Sam Bradford get drafted. Uh, who is left? You can still get Tyrod in the 14th. you will be fine. I don't think Bortles is going to be starting quarterback the whole year. Uh, but you'll be fine. You can, you could even get to this range. You'll be fine. It's not ideal, but I would probably take Tyrod, Flacco, Smith. But you're streaming at that point. Um... We don't need to take a defense or a kicker, so we can take one more shot. Uh, definitely Jonathan Williams. Yeah, the, the same guys are there. D'Angelo Henderson has been mixed in with the first team in the, the first and second? I don't remember the first one, but definitely the second. I think he was mixed in with the first team with... Um, I don't remember the name I just said, but it was Anderson mixing in with Henderson. And Henderson looks good. So keep that in mind um i believe he's the backup but he's the guy i would pick as the backup uh so keep his name in mind um just kind of those guys to keep their name in mind so it was him it was the seahawks running back they can't remember the carson um cream hunt but apparently he's going super early we'll make our pick here jonathan williams like historically the running back two on the Bills, go away. The running back two on the Bills has put up numbers, like start-worthy numbers. Like you could play Gillisley, and you can play, oh, can't remember his name. It's escaping me. The guy that got fat, and when he was like eating a bunch of junk with his wife when she was pregnant. Williams, was he Williams too? jaw whatever his name was you could start him as well <laughs> he was really good and then he got fat and now he's not in the league um but so i think jonathan williams 15th round man i take him to 13th honestly uh but let's look at our team so starting lineup would be cam newton aj green larry fitz we got demarco and joe mixon we'd throw Diggs in the uh flex we'd have austin hooper tight end and then our bench would be AP, Terrence West, Sproles, Burkhead, Williams, and then wide receivers, Emmanuel Sanders, Jordan Matthews, Dachson. It's not super deep at wide receiver, but I feel confident in AJ Green, Diggs, Larry, and Sanders to where I'll just take a shot on Dachson. That's always my take on Dachson. Take a shot on him, honestly, in like a lot of drafts. Because he could be huge. He could take over prior as the one. I don't think he will, but he could. And even if he doesn't, 
He's going to see a lot of time if he can stay healthy. But even if he gets hurt, it's your 14th round pick. You're going to drop him anyways. I mean, let's be honest. You have to drop two players for week one. So just, just draft these teams. And then even if you're not, even if you're like not doing this strategy and you draft a defense kicker in the 14th, 15th, you can take Docs in the 13th. Because even if you drop him, it didn't hurt you that much. And you took a shot. You know, you didn't draft Latavius Murray knowing very well that you're not going to use him. And he's not having any value. At least he's got a shot. And then I, I feel comfortable dropping players who I just took a shot on. And it's just like, eh, it didn't work out. Oh, well. I'll drop him for the Tyree Kill or the Jay Ajayi or the Jordan Howard that pops up on free agency. The Ty Montgomery. Every year it happens. Uh, so you want low, high ceiling, low floor guys late that you need to ship off and pick up the guy on free agency. So that's the end of this video. Hope you did enjoy. If you did... How about we hit that like button? Subscribe if you're new, and thanks for watching.